Hi guys, it's Joy and we're gonna have another sit and chill video. So the one that you saw earlier, I filmed like a week ago. I think I filmed that video three different times because I kept getting, um, I kept getting busy with YouTube, right? Um, with all the stuff coming out. So I kind of wanted to capitalize on it, build, and then I started to unravel things that I knew and things that had affected me with the whole Trisha Paytas thing. And uh, I just thought I'd come and hang out and talk. So I'm in a little bit of a flare up, um, Vegas nerve, and I'm irritated because it's my fault. So I'll give you guys a quick update. I feel completely, whatever that is, cold, virus, whatever it was, I feel completely free of it. Hasn't been an issue for like at least two weeks, I think. Longer maybe, a time is like all melded into itself. Cause I don't, it's weird. Like I feel like even though I work every day, I don't work. And what I mean by that is it's like, everything blurs into itself cause I always work. It's not that what I'm doing with this is hard work. It's that being sick, I'm really limited on how much I can do. So it's hard for me. Um, but y'all know me, I'm, I'm a businesswoman and I wanna build and I'm really energetic even when I'm sick. That's something a lot of people don't understand about me is being energetic and sick, but with what I have, it kind of goes, uh, kind of goes hand in hand. So I thought I'd just talk to y'all for a little bit and sit and chill. And um, the first thing is I wanna thank everybody, like sincerely, thank you so much for the kindness of the last video. When I talk about my health, I get a little bit nervous because I'm just ready for everybody to hate me or scream that I'm lying. You know, this you guys know that the history, a lot of you guys have been with me a while, know the history that I've had with people just, you know, assuming I'm lying just because, just because it creates drama and attention. And and so I'm I'm just insanely grateful for all the support and all the kindness and, and thank you. And many of you guys, and this is kind of interesting, I thought I'd bring this up. Many of, I've, I've seen several comments, she doesn't have COVID because she would have this, this, and this. Um, and even though I can understand, and I kind of question that too, I'm like, well, I, I am asthmatic and my lungs are fine, but COVID affects everybody differently. And that's why, because it had lasted so long and the effect it had on my nervous system, that's why we were so worried. Also, I don't know why I'm having right eye issues. Like it feels like there's constantly something in my eye, but look, I don't think it looks like red or irritated or it doesn't even feel like allergies. If I use eye drops, it doesn't help. This kind of has been coming and going over the last couple of weeks. I'm not really worried about it. It's just, ah, it's irritating if you see me do that. Um, but I thought I would talk a little bit today because I'm, uh, when I say I'm taking time off, let me explain. I'm not necessarily taking time off from the channel, but um, I'm having to take a little bit of a step back, a small one, and I'll kind of explain what I mean. Uh, YouTube is my life. By the way, well, I should say YouTube and health. And I totally understand in some of my videos when people are like, you always relate things back to your health. Can you have a video where you don't do that? And my answer is probably not. <laughs> and look, I understand that can get frustrating, but I've said from the beginning, this channel is gonna be really widely focused on health and I'm gonna do everything I can to spread information about that. And part of how I do that is relate it to my experience or knowledge I have. But look, like I understand that can be irritating. And I also understand like that is not for everybody. And I'm totally okay with that. You know what I mean? Like if you like, and I understand some people are like, you're obsessive with your health. Don't you think it's an issue? The problem is I have to be obsessive with my health because this body doesn't work and I fight to keep it here. So it's a double-edged sword. So it's like, I understand what people are saying, but until you actually live it, it's a very different story. My day is about keeping myself alive. For most people, it's let's get through the day and get to what we need to, to get to the next whatever goal we have. For me, it's how do I stay alive? And there's something I've been processing over the last week. Um, and, uh, I wanted to let you guys know, I know I've talked a lot about Trisha Paytas recently and I said I was going to drop my evidence video. I'm going to hold back. Um, and I made that decision because I'm doing some soul searching. And by the way, I have to apologize. This is like, I didn't take a shower yesterday. I haven't taken one today. And because my hair is in the state that it is, it just looks horrible. I used to be able to go three days without washing my hair. Nobody could tell, but that's just where I'm at. I'm going to have a, a video. I think I'm going to do a whole video about, you know, my hair getting thin and hair loss and because I am going to be working on that, but that's kind of at the bottom of the list. Like keeping me alive comes first and then everything else around it. Right. But I thought I would talk about some of the soul searching I'm doing, um, about some of my content. So I'm a businesswoman. I like to build and I'm in this blessed and unfortunate situation of being ill and being homebound. I don't drive right now. Um, I, not only does my vehicle not work, I can't. Uh, it is too tough on my body still. If, if, I, if I was really pushed to, I probably could, but I would be very sick. And the, the histamine issues that would come up, the cortisol issues, the POTS issues, it's, it's not real safe. So it'd have to be like an emergency and I don't wanna go long distances. So I'm very much homebound. And while that was very hard to accept in the beginning, part of me doing YouTube was that was 
uh, that was my method. It was my coping method and mechanism of having to accept that I was home a lot, um, home almost all the time. And um, it is interesting though, because you ever see like document, not documentaries or movies or things where you see people in prison and you're like, how do they get used to it? How do they not just go crazy all the time? Well, at some point, a peace will settle in with your situation. And I think it's just these natural coping abilities our minds and bodies have, right? And so at some point, I don't know what happened, but I broke through all the emotions of being upset about staying home and I found the peace in it. I don't like it. I would love to be free and have a free life, but I've accepted that this is my reality for the moment, that everything happens for a reason. There's a reason I'm in this position and something good will come out of it even if I don't agree with it and even if I don't see it. These are the coping tools that I use to help me with my situation. Um, like I said, it's going to be a sit and chill video. So some of this you guys have already seen. I just want to smell some stuff. Victoria's Secret came out with some new spring scents. I am so excited. Strawberries and champagne is back. They just ran out, but I talked to one of the uh, the associates who was able to see the restock date, and that's in April. That's fine. I can chill till April, but like I can't, can't wait for my strawberries and champagne. That's like one of my favorites. And I think I told you guys a story about my like lotions and... I'm pointing over here. You guys can't see it. I have a huge table of body sprays and stuff. And then I have stuff in the closet. Um, I loved body sprays and lotions. I didn't have a ton of them. I probably had about 10 or 12, but I loved them. And what my story is, is that, uh, you know, most of them I got somewhere between the 2006 and 2010 ish era, like early, like mid 2006, early 2010. And then I got super sick. And in getting sick, I couldn't wear any of it anymore. And I'm so stupid, I didn't realize it goes bad. So when I finally was able to want to put things on, I started to lose weight and I started to feel a little more like myself. Because for a long time, I was almost at five foot two, almost 300 pounds. I was just like, I just look like a, I look like a sea monster. <laughs> like I just look like a walking whale. And there's nothing, I don't feel feminine. Like it was weird. I almost felt genderless in a way. Um, also, because I have hormones that don't work, which that's a whole nother video. Um... But yeah, so, uh, but when I started to, you know, when I started to lose a significant amount of weight and I started to feel a little better, I was like, after probably the first 50 pounds, I was like, you know what, just to make myself feel better, I'm going to put on body spray and it had all gone bad and I had a horrible reaction. And then I just had horrible reactions to my favorite things. I, I love scents. I love it. I think scent and aromatherapy is just so magical. It's really healing. And I couldn't do it for months. Um, I would I would try to do it and I'd have immediate asthma. I'd have horrible reactions. And my body broke through that and now I'm able to wear them. So like, if, if it seems like I'm kind of obsessed with my little scents, like this is probably my favorite. My signature scent for me is teas. I love this stuff. It's peony. It's so nice. Um, I'm just... I'm so insanely grateful for every day for the little things. And for me, this is like a huge thing. This might be a little thing to everybody else. It's just a little thing they don't think about. Like this is my, I'm almost going to cry. This is my time of the day when I get to feel like a person again. And so if you, if you guys ever want to know why I get like, ah, what's wrong with my eyes? Why I get so excited about my sense. That's why. So a really fun hobby for me has been like, I'm kind of, I'm a couponer with certain things, only with certain things though. Ah, so I'll learn the retail cycles. Like I know the retail, I know a lot of the retail cycles of Bath and Body Works and um, I, and Victoria's Secret because their, their scents are my favorite. And I also know when you can get them the cheapest. And typically you can get between three and maybe three seventy five a bottle. Um, if you do it at certain times, they'll have sales where they go down to six dollars a bottle. Plus you can have uh, a twenty off a fifty coupon. So typically that's how I do that. And sometimes the sales vary, and the SAS sales will vary with that too. Um, but if you catch stuff right, you can get stuff. I think the cheapest I got it was two eighty five a bottle. Um, and typically they retail. You know, if you weren't gonna get a deal, it's eighteen a bottle. But typically it's like, oh, you get like you know five for uh, thirty five dollars or something. That can be the normal deal that they have go on. So I'm like, so that's always a little something fun. I can spend like you know fifty bucks a month. And a lot of months I don't spend anything. So maybe it like me every couple months. Um, and then I will figure out what's new. I'll go in the stores, like test it. What do I like? And then I come back and I like, I try to figure and I'll, I'll figure out the math and when, when the different coupons are, when are the $20 coupons coming off? You know, typically on Sundays and Mondays is when they'll do the $6 cent sales. So like I'll go through all of that and then I can calculate. So it's really fun for me. And then I get all these new scents and the scents are awesome. I love stuff that smells like springtime. I love fruity scents. I love floral scents. Um, I love anything that smells like sunshine and makes me happy. And this just really makes me happy. Uh, so I'm just getting, I'm getting emotional talking about this. It's so stupid, but this is like, this is my little thing. This is one of my little things. You know, we all have our things and, uh, I don't have a ton, but this has like meant the world to me while I'm getting better. So, okay. 
You know what's funny? It's probably not about sense. Why am I getting emotional? I think I'm getting emotional because I always, I always say like you're never typically you're never upset for the reason you think you are. This is a philosophy that I that I have, and a lot of like kind of Eastern philosophers, you know, Buddhist types have, and I love and I do practice a lot of the Buddhist Taoist type of stuff. Um, you know, about like letting go, everything is meant to be, that sort of thing. Like, um, just kind of the mindsets about being present. I, I'm not perfect, but I do my best. And I'm, I'm really torn. And this is like, I feel like this is the YouTuber curse. Okay. Um, I want to grow my channel. I want to grow my channel quickly, right? Anybody who's, who's good at their business. Cause you got to remember it's YouTube is a business. You're a business person. Now, not everybody realizes that and some aren't great with their business, but that's everybody, right? Some people are good. Some people are bad, but I'm a businesswoman. I like to build and I like to build quick. Um, it's fun to watch something grow. Uh, but I did a bunch of Trisha Paytas videos. I stand by everything I've done. I like what I've done, but I started to notice. And some of y'all left comments, and I'm going to say thank you because I do read them. Uh, the ones that are nasty, I will delete, just so you know. Now, sometimes if you have, if you leave a respectful comment, it disappears. Sometimes YouTube's remove stuff. So I want you guys to know. Like, I only remove stuff if it's really nasty, just so you guys are aware. But sometimes YouTube does remove stuff. And I'm totally open about that. You know, I used to do this extreme free speech, but... I feel like bullying can be guised under that. And that's what happened to me a lot. And I'm like, no, I, I'm done. I can set some rules and boundaries. And if people don't like it, they can kick rocks. I don't care. Um, and, you know, for the most part, I'm somebody that I've had to learn when it comes to this stuff. I need to stick true with what feels right to me. And I have to go forward with that confidence. And if people don't like it, oh, well. But I also have an audience, which I am so, like, I'm genuinely, like, so grateful for... <laughs> I could cry talking about this. I'm grateful for like, ev ah, stop it, eyes. I'm grateful for every single one of you because I never knew, I never thought I'd get to hang out with you guys again like this. So I'm really, really grateful. And um, I've learned a lot recently and I've learned a lot over the last few years. Sorry, this this is it. This is where I'm emotional. So maybe you guys won't see this. And I know you hear YouTubers say this. I don't really see this video. I really do. I'll make a lot of videos that nobody sees because and I've said this in my videos before. This is therapy. I can't super afford a therapist right now. And I'd need a therapist that understands what happens if you're like a YouTuber. Because that's like, I don't need a celebrity therapist. First of all, I couldn't afford that. Secondly, who knows me, but like some factions of YouTube and small ones, like but I would need somebody who understands the mental health struggles that we go through, plus chronic illness, plus all the trauma I've had in my life. And I'm like, I need to find a unicorn at a good price. <laughs> and I'm just not there. But uh, I did read your guys' comments and I took them in. And I had a couple friends. Uh, so I will tell you, here's something I do that's very affordable. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and say this. Uh, I've gotten permission. There's somebody, if you guys have Instagram, and you like things, you like intuitives, you like intuition, you like readings, go check out The Wandering Intuitive. I'm going to put a link in the description. Leave a comment and tell her Joy sent you. She has been a friend of mine for, I'm getting emotional even talking about her. Something's going on with me. I keep getting emotional today. Uh, I met her in 2016. She was the one that encouraged me to get on YouTube and was like, this is your path. Um, she is not just somebody I get readings from. She is one of my, uh, one of my dearest friends. And I am eternally grateful that I have met her. She's somebody when I have an emergency, I can call her and she can help me like through my body stuff. And um, she is also one of the most accurate readers I have ever met. Um, I told you guys, you know, people have asked me about my new age past me to go stuff. And I said, yeah, I have a new age past. Well, there's still some things I enjoy and I'm still very big on intuitive stuff and, and, and you know, the, the ability to have knowing and knowledge without without having it, if that makes sense. And I think that's innate in all of us. I think for some people, it's kind of stronger than others and vice versa, and you can work on it. Kind of like, just like I think some people are more mathematical or inclined or musical inclined, but check her out, The Wandering Intu or it's Wandering Intuitive. She does horoscopes and she is scary accurate. When I say scary accurate, she predicted some things I did not see coming. She predicted I would come back to the Joy Channel was I when I was on Stimulus, and I was so unopened to it. There were a few big things recently she has predicted. I mean, came out of left freaking field, and she has nailed it. She has nailed, I would say, 90 to 95% of what she has told me is accurate. And uh, I'm so grateful to her. So go check her out. Um, but I was I was talking to her and a couple other friends, and, you know, I was... Uh, and, and I was getting a reading from her and we, we sat and had a conversation and she was just like, listen, she's like, I think you need to reevaluate some of your content. And 
from her saying that, and I won't go into all of her talk, but that versus the comments, I stopped and I had to be like, okay, I know I want to build my channel. I also know I'm really upset realizing who Trisha is, which by the way, and some of you guys pointed this out and you're absolutely correct. Take what I'm saying with a grain of salt until I have evidence. And I have it. I just haven't put it out yet. I, I want to wait for the right time and I want to ease up on this subject because I want to learn from my past mistakes. And what's hard is, is that like, I feel like I've learned from my past mistakes, but, and I think a lot of people go, so what I'm going to say is not unique to me. This is like the human condition. It's, I think, more hyped up and more severe for me because everything is about keeping me alive. When I find a subject that does really well, I want to stay on it because I want to grow the channel and I want to get this as successful as possible. And I think there's a few things. I think I'm, I think I'm still hurt. How do I put this? No, let me back up. I feel like I let everything go with what happened on YouTube before. But I feel like I got wounds reopened because of what I learned about Trisha and what she did to me. And not just her, a lot of people, but specifically her, that she was going around to people, bad mouthing people, telling me not, telling people not to work with me long before anything had ever happened with me, like in May. And I have to wonder how many people she did that with. And um, I'm sad about it. I'm, I think I'm, I think I'm realizing I'm sad. Um... To me, and I don't want to make this about her, but she, the, the way she acts, embodies all the stereotypes people absolutely can't stand about women. And the fact that she saw another woman creator doing well, coming up. And look, it's not like I'm getting fillers and, and doing makeup and clothing hauls. And more power to you if you are, okay? That's not a diss. I'm just saying, like, we have widely different audiences. Why would she do that to me? And the only reason is I think if she sees something that's competition, i.e. a female coming up and, and doing super well, she's going to squash it. I couldn't get it. When I saw what was going on, I was like, I cannot justify why she did this and why she lied about it. And it's made me see a whole other side to the YouTube equation of what happened to me before. I grew too fast too quickly and people find that as a threat and they needed to shut me up and silence me. That's That's one thing. That's not all of it. But it's a piece, right? It's all a puzzle and you find pieces. And people would try to explain that to me. And my thought process is, look, I know I don't look that good. I'm sick. Um, like, I, I'm in a horrible life situation. And all these people have much bigger platforms. What would they have to be jealous of? And I understand it. It was my ability to grow my YouTube channel. It was people liked my content. You know, I think it, people liked me. And... And that is, to many YouTubers, it's a threat. To me, it's not. To me, it's, I think there's, there's room for everybody and everybody can grow their audience the way they need to. But you got to understand a lot of these YouTubers don't see it. I'm telling you that the type of tactics that Trisha did, so many other YouTubers do. This is common. This is common for people to act this way. And yet, then again, you got to remember, even though this is like the alternative media, you know, YouTube is uh, the entertainment business and the entertainment business itself is dirty. It just made me really sad um, to see how many people went out of their way to try to ruin my career before it even got started just because they were jealous. Yet they would act like your friend. And I think I'm processing that. And I had to look at the content I was doing and I said, okay, I like what I've said. I stand by what I've said. I took some hits because people don't like it. I'm challenging popular narrative. I'm talking about somebody they like. And I understand that. You know, I'm not complaining. That's what it is. But I had to take a step back and say, look, one of the issues I had before, even though I still stand by my content and I was correct, was I did too many videos on certain subjects. I don't think that should be a crime, but when you're dealing with people that can look like bullying. And I was like, I don't want to turn into the person that Trisha's been to me. I don't want to do that. So I was like, you know what? I need to take a break from this topic. Um, and that's why I'm going to hold off right now. So I will at some point put it out, but I want to, and I also want to, you know, kind of pivot because sometimes I can, I can get lost in wanting to build the channel. Um, and I, I love the content I put out and I believe in what I put out. Like I won't just put out stories about here's what's trending. You know what I mean? Like just because like I, I can't, I got like, I've got to be some kind of authentic to you guys. Right. I just, it like, I literally can't do it. Um, so everything I put out, I believe in, but I also need to just remember to do content that like makes me feel good and makes me happy. And it feels good to stand up for myself in front of people like Trisha who've harmed me and other people, but there's a time and a place for that. And I think my content might've started to go overboard with that, even though I still stand by what I said and I'm still proud of it. 
And I think I was getting on that edge and I'm well enough now and I've learned from the examples before where I'm now able to have the right people around me and take that and, and you guys, which I love you guys, and take that step back and go, you know what? I, I need to ease off and refocus a bit. If anything, for my mental sanity. Um, it's been hard to know how many YouTubers I supported and really wanted the best for um, just to try to ruin my life because they were jealous. I, I don't understand. Like, this has happened to me throughout my life. Um, you guys know I'm a type A personality, I'm a businesswoman, and I'm a very accomplished person. And people have seen me do accomplishments, break goals, do different things, and workplace, and, and look good, and, and shine at things. Not everything, obviously, but the things I'm able to do. And it puts a target on my back. It's always, even like when I was a server, it's happened because I got the better sections or the better tips or people requested me more. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, I've had this happen throughout my life and people get catty and try to sabotage me or get me fired. And it's so pointless. Like, I don't know. I operate differently. If I see that somebody has something that I want, I don't get mad and try to destroy them. I go, oh my God, how did you get that? How can I help you? Let's be friends. Like, that's how I operate with people. And I have done the most amazing networking and met and met the most amazing people, some powerful, some celebrity people be, being able to, to do that. And, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for that. Um, I just don't understand it. And I think that's part of why I'm so personally hurt for Shane Dawson, because I'm watching one of his friends completely screw him over. And Trisha wasn't a friend, but I'm just like, he must be feeling horrible and everybody's just crapping on him. And I know what that feels like. I'm not saying Shane is an innocent person. He doesn't have his own issues or he hasn't done anything to hurt people. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying about everybody dogpiling. And I think it also got frustrating because I was like, so all the drama channels can make a Sean, a Sean, what's his name? A Shane Dawson video a day, right? They can make one a day for a whole freaking year and everybody applauds. And I do a series on Trisha and people get mad because it's too many, but it's never too many on Shane or Rylan or Morgan or anybody that surrounds them. And the hypocrisy is what makes me mad. But what I have to remind myself of is I don't want to become the people that I don't like. And if I'm not careful, that can happen easily. I think the second time I came back to YouTube, I was trying to stand up for myself in a crowd I didn't understand. In a time where I didn't do a lot of that, in, like I could if I needed to in different areas, especially business, but in a YouTube setting, I didn't understand it. And I think I just came across as defensive and, and mean and bullying. And then on top of being huge, well, that just gave ample fire for people to hate me. And looking back now, I can understand that. And remember, I've said this, right? A lot of times if, you, if you're one extreme with something, so in the beginning of my channel, I let everybody walk all over me, say whatever they wanted, steal my content, copyright, do all of that. Well, then I went to the other extreme because I didn't know how to balance yet. And I'm it's a process. I'm still learning. I'm, I'm still learning and growing. Um, for instance, a quick health update. I'm mad at myself because like, <laughs> so I started back on the carrots. Day five of carrots. I am so happy. I was only able to get to three days last time and I had to stop. But I was also in the middle of whatever that was that hit. So I am uh, five days on the carrots. I have had some stomach upset and some vagus nerve stuff, but I don't know if that's the carrots. Um, I'm up to three tablespoons a day which to you guys is like, so you're basically eating no carrots. I'm like, no, that's like, like if, if I parcel them out, that's like seven decent bites. <laughs> so the goal is to get up to a cup and then I get to move on to my babies. My, I get to do onions. I get to do onions and olive oil. That used to be a staple on like every meal I ate, I would have sauteed onions. So like, I'm so jazzed. Of, oh, I can't even talk, I'm gonna cry. I can't talk about the fact that I might get to eat sauteed onions in the next month or so. So, um. I'm now at the point where I started walking in the mornings. I had to go slow, but I'm up to 20 minutes a day. I want to get up to 30 and eventually an hour. Um, I wish I had a park I could walk in. And it's not that we don't have parks nearby me. It's that I, am, it's not safe enough for me to go by myself. And right now we are a one car household. So if I were to need help, Rumi would have to Uber to me. It's just too expensive. So I just have the treadmill, um, which is fine. And I'm grateful for it. I got like a hundred dollar treadmill somewhere and it's a rinky dink treadmill, but it works. Right. And I'm grateful for it. Um, and, uh, so one day I, I'm so irritated at myself. It's been cold. And that's another thing. So our dog, Macy, she's like 18 years old. We can't take her for walks in the cold. Cause you know, most dogs, they can be cold, but they'll want to walk. Macy is like 18 and she has arthritis. She just stands there and cries. It hurts her to be out in the cold. It's really awful. So the days, but I'm also in Oklahoma city. I'm more South of the equator and we have warmer days in the summer. Cause I'm used to Kansas city where it's just a, every extreme weather and like the cold, the winters are just awful. So, 
Um, we had a warm day the other day and I was like, let's get her on a walk after I'd done the 20 minute walk. And I'd already felt like I was pushing myself that day. And I did a f another 40 minutes in nature. I just, it's, it's like small things for me. One of the most healing things, the thing that makes me like, like, you know, high, right. That just gets me so high is to just put on headphones. And I told y'all my vision's different. So when I go out, like the sky sparkles and trees are all like gold and glittery. It's just, it's, and I'm not even joking. My vision is just a little different. I've never really talked about it and I've never really given it much. You know, you just have those weird, we all have those weird quirks about us with our bodies or something that we just kind of assume either everybody has and they don't talk about or whatever you just don't think about. And that's kind of what's happened with my eyesight, but I'm going to be getting my eyes checked out more. So like, it really is a trip for me to go for a walk in nature. I think this is what a lot of people experience on a drug trip. Um, you know, you see auras around things. It's just, it's beautiful. And I feel like I really get to connect with whatever you want to call, whatever people would consider heaven is. That's what it feels like. It's just this beautiful, big amount of unconditional love and wisdom and knowledge and light. It's just amazing. And I put on headphones and I listen to the most beautiful music and I process things and I go through things. And there are a couple personal things I'm going through. Um, I won't talk about it just yet. And there's really nothing to talk about. You know, it's just stuff that I'm I'm dealing with some emotions. Um, and I did a 40 minute walk, a 40 minute, and Macy could not have been happier. That little dog was just run, like, she can't really run, but she can kind of bunny hop a little bit and she'll bunny hop. She'll get all excited and she'll go <coughs> with her paws. Um, she's the cutest little thing. We just love her. We also figured out recently she likes eggs. So we feed her, uh, we feed her a lot of chicken and we'll do chicken, uh, rice, carrots and now we've been putting in some eggs and we're gonna do and we eat some cabbage and it's like her own little stir fry and she is the happiest pup she is the most spoiled dog like every meal for her is a home-cooked meal but you know she had a heart we we our understanding we didn't fully know what happened but she had a hard time before us so we're like you're in retirement girl live it up her dad roommate is they're the cutest couple you should see them but uh yeah i screwed myself up I woke up the next day, my muscles were so sore I could barely move. And that's not a big deal. Or that's just irritating, right? It's like, ugh. But for me, that sucks because that means I'm going to gain weight because it's lactic acid. And lactic acid makes me gain weight and it messes with my histamine. So it was like, I overdid it. So uh, I had to take a day off of walking. And then last night I had stomach and vagus nerve hit, um, which is really frustrating. So I kind of can't work today. I can kind of sit and chill with you guys, but after this, I'm gonna be laying flat all day. And the weather's nice again. I'm like, I wanna go take Macy for a walk, but I can't. And I think the big thing I'm having to, to go through right now is is balance. And I think that's everybody, right? Um, it just sucks because for me, everything is like this life or death situation. And it's like, it's not because I want it to be. It's not because I'm being super dramatic. It's because this is the body that I have and I'm trying to work within its confines. And at the end of the day, why can I not go slower with this channel? Why do I have this incessant need to build it as quickly as I can, right? Which is not really the best thing because it's going to put a target on my back, right? But now I know how to deal with it better. But still, you guys see what I'm talking about? So I know what it boils down to. Um, guilt. It's guilt. And it's me trying to push things and go too quick because I feel guilty about my situation. And this is something I'm aware of. And this is something I I deal with on a daily basis. But I become I'm becoming more aware of it over time and how it affects me. I feel guilty every day of my life that I live with roommate. I feel guilty because uh, his life is being held back by helping me, but he knows if he doesn't, I'm not going to be here because he's the only one that either is in the position to help me or can. I don't have family who cares. They're interesting. They look at women as you need to be ultimately independent or you are weak and screw you. You deserve whatever you get and you can't be ill unless you're a male, even though they know we have chronic illness run in our family. Um, and they, as a result, they are dangerous people to me. I have other friends who would gladly help and take me in, but they either can't or they aren't equipped to do so, or they don't have the money. And you know what? I wouldn't, I'm never upset at those people because we're all struggling in life, right? But it's like me staying alive stops him from living. And this is where I'm getting upset. And I can't tell you how awful it feels. And, and you know, I've known since I was young, both parents let me know that you weren't wanted. You were a mistake. And so, and that's hard. That's hard to know. And it's hard to see over the years what that did to me as a person and my, and my psychology. Um, it causes a lot of pain. And I would assume that's part of the reason I'm ill the way I am. Um, I think a lot of illness comes from, I think it can come from emotions. Uh, by the way, I'm not saying that illness isn't real. It's real. And I'm not saying, oh, if you're sick, screw you. Because this is, it's just a, 
it, it drives me nuts now, the new agers, right? That new age philosophy of like, well, if you're sick, it's because you have unhealed emotions. So you're just being lazy. And you're just, something's wrong with you and, the, and your emotions and you're just negative. And it's like, no, shut up. There's so much more to health than that. I just feel like that's such a damaging thing to tell people. So I don't ever want to come across that way because it's not how I feel. I feel the opposite. But I also think sometimes from trauma we go through, trauma can spark stuff in our DNA that is just sitting there waiting to activate. You know what I'm saying? And they've even found sometimes a big illness. Like I was talking to somebody that I know from school and they have a they have a family member who's uh, got diabetes. It's an awful situation. My heart goes out to him. And the diabetes was spurned by a really bad stomach flu. And sometimes I think that happens. I think I think we're going to find a lot more chronic illness deals with the nervous system. I really, and across the board with uh, the person I'm working with, that's the research that's coming out more and more. I think we're going to hear more about the nervous system for the next 50 years and more power to it, right? Because I think we should. Uh, the nervous system gets out of whack and so many things can happen as well as histamines. Histamine is going to be something else I think we'll hear more about. Um, so yeah, um, I just feel guilty. I feel guilty because to get out of here, to get out of here, I've got to do the impossible. I've got to make like five or $10 million. How do I do that in my situation? I'm confident on my abilities and I'm confident. Yeah, I bet I can make that over my lifetime or at some point, but like to get a house paid off, an account with everything I need for the rest of my human life, if it exists that long or maybe longer. Um, and, and then to have all the help I need medically, if I have to have move in help, we're talking a ton of money, guys. $75,000 a year for 50 years for live-in medical help. Do the math on that, right? Just do the math. That's a few million right there. Like, it's it's scary. The situation is scary. Um, but I care about roommate, you know? We're not together, but we very much care about each other. And he's the one keeping me alive when I have family members that are horrible and selfish. They should be helping. There's, there's no reason they shouldn't. It's not like they're in their own bad situations. They are just selfish and jealous and mean. Not to say I'm perfect, but there's just no reason for it. Um, and I push myself to my detriment because I'm trying to build this as quick as I can so I can give him his life back. And I'm really having to wrestle with that. And I'm not saying this for sympathy. I'm just, honestly, I'm just kind of shooting the crap with you guys because I'm sure a lot of you who are watching, can you guys are in your own situations. You can relate or you're chronically ill and maybe you're going through it. I think this is really normal for chronically ill people to have a lot of guilt about the people that are caretakers to them, you know? Because we see it. I see the toll it takes on him and I hate it. I hate it. But I can't immediately fix it. This isn't a situation where I can just go get my own place. Like, and it probably won't be at least for another eight months. And that's if I'm lucky. I, that's me guessing. We didn't know. We're doing this. This is going on five years. We had no clue I was going to be here this long and it would last this long. And um, I just want to give him his life back. And I'm so capable of doing so much. But my body just keeps failing me where people just keep being mean and sabotaging. And it's really hard. That's why I bring it up. And I'm not trying to brag. I'm just, I'm almost like dumbfounded and awestruck that on my stimulus channel, our first full monetized month, $76,000, and they decide not to pay me and take me to federal court. We were on our way to making a quarter of a million that next month because I know what I'm doing. I know how to build. And I spent all the energy of the little bit of health I had on that. And then the lawsuit and the stress of that, that pummeled me. And then trying to restart this channel because I had to leave that one because my health got too bad. And, and then the illness of the last month and a half that hit like it's just one thing after another and i'm not unique to that like right? like welcome to life it's just the be called life you know it's like when it rains it like <laughs> i don't know it's tsunamis and it fire tornadoes sometimes right and i'm just like i was there like i was right there and i was about to build my life and give him his life back and people had to get mean again and that's what I'm going through lately. And I'm going to take a little bit of a step back this week. I have some pre-recorded stuff I'll put up. Stuff that I, unless something trending comes out, I can jump on. Stuff that I know isn't going to do super well. It's not going to super grow the channel. But you know what? That's okay. I'm trying to remind myself, don't do what I did last time. If I need to go a bit slower and steadier, that's okay. But then I feel guilty because it's like, if you don't work your butt off every single day to give him his life back, you're a bad person. And like, that's, that's what I fight in my head. And... This is just what happens when you're chronically ill, you know, if, if you're a decent person. You know what? I'm not saying that decent people have to feel bad. Hopefully you're not in the same spot as I am. But I also think this just comes from feeling guilty about the fact that I'm even alive because both parents made sure I knew I wasn't supposed to be. Um, they're doing me a favor. 
And it's just really hard. And um, I don't want to become the person I don't like because of my situations, even if it's life or death. Because I don't want people to go through what I've been through, especially on YouTube. And even though I don't like Trisha, I don't think she deserves that. I don't think anybody deserves it. But I'm also saying the truth. I'm saying the truth about some things and outing some behaviors that I think need attention, but I think there's a way to do it. And I need to remember that and I need to keep that in check. I'm, it sucks. It's like I've learned from my mistakes, but then when circumstance outweighs that, like you feel stuck. So what I'm trying to do, and this is really hard, I'm just trying to have faith. If I grow this slower and I take a little, which by the way, roommate's always saying go slower. Like he's telling me and I'm the one saying, no, I feel bad. But I'm going to slow down and I'm also going to have faith that things can work out. Maybe I don't have to go crazy and build this channel to massive heights so I can have a life that other miracles can happen, you know, and maybe that they will. And like the truth is, if I really want to get better, I shouldn't be doing this. I should take six months and focus on just my healing and do nothing. But I can't. We will be bankrupt. You know, that that's the situation. And um, so it, it is a life or death situation for me and it sucks. Welcome to be chronically ill. The good news is I'm going to get better. We know what it is and we have a path and a plan to fix me. All my other doctors, mainstream doctors that I wouldn't, but I'm doing it and I can't wait. I cannot wait to introduce my practitioner to you guys. I can't wait to just like really get into the nitty gritty of some of this. I really genuinely, truly, I just can't wait. Um, I, I can't wait to show you guys uh, everything that I've learned about health. And I'm just hoping that if it, do, if it can help you, great. Or if not, maybe that info can spread to other people that can help other people. Um, I want to believe that, that whatever God is or isn't put me in this position for some reason. And that hopefully it can be to help people on some level. And I'm going to work to do that. And uh, so, yeah, I just thought I'd tell you guys this week it might be a bit calmer content. And now if something big blows up, I'm going to cover it, right? Because if I can, as long as my body lets me. But... Today, I'm going to do something that I haven't done since I started this channel. I'm going to take a day off. I say that I still filmed a video today, uh, but I mean like from, you know, really working, working. I might look around. I might prepare some stuff to film for tomorrow, but I'm going to, I'm going to not wash my hair again. And that's okay. I'll take my freezing cold body shower like I do every day. I hate it. Um, I'll drink tea. I will chill. I will allow my vagus nerve to relax and I will just... Be grateful for everything I have and be grateful for you guys and be grateful that I am, am working on getting the ability to have faith that things will happen as they need to and that things will come together as they need to, even if I disagree with it, even if I can't see it. Um, and uh, I'm going to slow down a little bit or I'm going to try. So yeah, that's, that's where I'm at. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening to my little brain dump. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. But, and you know, there are some good pieces in here. I think it's good for me to see the reality of YouTube and who these YouTubers are. That is good for me to not be naive to it. So that's a good thing that this happened. I'm eating carrots and I'm on my way to onions. That is an amazing, amazing thing. I have a diet that works for me. Um, I have an old dog who I just love to pieces. I have a roommate who's just the nicest person in the world. I have a handful of friends that will kindly guide me if I am starting to go down the wrong path. And I have an audience that like genuinely cares about me and I am so grateful. I thought with my video about my test results, I was I was like, I'm gonna get caught, just nothing but a comment section of, I hate you, you know, go get off the planet in a mean way. <laughs> go make yourself go off the planet. Um, oh, you're just a scam artist. And you guys were just so supportive. And so many of you so nicely were like, hey Joy, I'm telling you this because I care, slow down. Thank you. I'm, I'm listening. I'm listening. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I'm trying. I'm doing my best. Now, if something big comes out that I feel like I need to cover with her, I will. But I want to I take a step back, you know? And there's other stuff I want to talk about. I never run out of content ideas. What I get scared of is doing anything that's going to backtrack the views. And I know that might sound stupid. I know that you guys might roll your eyes. But again, it's because I'm trying to build. Because I've got to get to like five or ten million dollars as quickly as possible. And I've got to regain what I lost with the, the business channel I built. You know, it's and I just gotta go stop. Like the business channel didn't work out because that's not what I was supposed to be doing. Maybe in the future I can go back to business and finance, which by the way, I'd love at some point to talk about the uh oh my gosh, the, the Main Street Lending uh Redditors. Uh not Main Street Lending, that's the Main Street Lending program, which didn't even get off the ground. That's that's stimulus. Um, the uh the Wall Street. 
the Wall Street Redditors. Like, I'm loving this. I'm loving the XRP game. I'm loving the GameStop stuff. Like, I'm gonna do a whole new video about this, but I'm so excited because I feel like for the first time I'm seeing our generations come together and we are actively saying no to Wall Street. And I'm so excited. And I've had a little investment in XRP. I, XRP was one of the ones I was like, like four or five years ago, I'm like, this is gonna be, what is, no. I started investing like three years ago and I started really looking at the coins in 2018, 2017, 2018. And I was like, XRP is gonna be a monster. And uh, I'm excited. So one day I'll do finance, but that wasn't supposed to be it. I was supposed to be here and be creative and just do whatever videos I wanted. And it's gonna work out however it needs to. And I just need to have faith in that and not hurt myself or push myself or hurt my business or hurt other people as much as I can to get there. And if I start to go down that path, I need to try to, as best as I can, get that awareness. And thank you guys for keeping me in check. That's why I'm, that's one of the reasons I get so emotional. I'm so grateful today. I can't do it because I'm my why is my eyes are gonna start watering. Ah, I'm gonna go. I need to like get ready for the day, and really, what my get ready today is brush my teeth. <laughs> that's my get ready today. But uh, I I might tonight take my cold shower and actually wash my hair tonight, so I'll have it ready for tomorrow morning. Man, my my hair was thick before all this happened. I could do that. I'm gonna do a video about that too about the hair loss. I think so. We'll see what he happens. We'll see what he happens. All right, guys, take care. Lots of love, lots of blessings. Thanks for hanging out. I hope all of you are doing well. I hope whatever you guys are going through, you know, just do whatever to, whatever feels right for you to do, do, and maybe my tools can work for you. Everything happens for a reason. Everything will work out to your best and highest benefit in the end, even if you can't see it. Um, and uh, I just have faith that, you know, when I'm stuck in a situation or there's no action to take, that whatever needs to work out will. And, um, I'm just so grateful. I'm so grateful that I get to come here and talk. I'm so grateful that I have this platform and I'm so grateful that I have so many wonderful people that understand me and choose to believe me and choose to believe in the best in me and be here. I love you guys. So take care, blessings. I will see you soon. All right, hugs and kisses. Not too many. I need to go brush my teeth. <laughs> okay, bye guys.